Hello everyone! I'm going to start a little bit of an experiment here just because we're all in quarantine. I thought I'd try something out. Um, I put out there on Facebook, choose a number between 3 and 429. 3 and 429, which happen to be the page numbers of my latest novel, Desperata. So the first number I got was 7. And I'm just going to randomly go to page 7 and, oh look, on page 7 is actually the start of a section in chapter 1 of the book. And I thought, I'm just going to read that section for you. Maybe post it up and see if anybody pays attention or is interested or not. If it's something that people like, maybe I'll do another one. Maybe I won't. Um, we'll see. <clears throat> so page 7 in Desperata, it's towards the beginning of chapter 1. The energy of the place hit him before he got inside. At first, it was the music, quiet and tinny but lively, played from an old piano somewhere deep in the recesses of the building. Then came the hum of chatter and laughter, vibrating through him as he stepped through the swinging doors. The song the piano plinked out became clearer, more defined. He could make out the familiar tune, one he had heard as a child, spirited and beckoning others to join in if they knew the words. A few of the patrons did, slurring them out in off-tone bursts of jovality. The heat was the second thing he noticed, stale, stifling, pressing against him like a wool blanket on a warm summer night. Sweat formed along his collar and under his arms. The air felt thick, and he struggled just a bit to breathe. An arm fell about his shoulders, pressing down on him and crushing him into the side of a fat, pudgy young man to his left. Well, a round red face asked him, the smell of alcohol already lacing his breath. What do you think? I think, Tom answered, looking around. It looks no different than the last time I were in here. We were eight, Tommy, his chubby companion replied, and Andy kicked us out before we could even peek at the girls. Tom felt his cheeks redden. Girls? He had forgotten about the girls. But, his friend continued, as of today, we are both men, and dear old Mr. Newhouse will not be able to turn us away, especially, he pulled out his leather money pouch and gave it a shake, since I'll be paying top coin. He released a high-pitched giggle and shook Tom's shoulders. Ready to become a man, Tommy? Tom's face grew hotter. Sure, he said shyly, feeling nervous and jittery. Whatever you say, Billy. Damn straight. Billy Vipitas was one of Tom's oldest friends. He wasn't the most honorable of boys he knew. In fact, he was quite spoiled, having been raised in a rich family. He often got away with many a social indiscretion, including thievery, vandalism, and truancy from school. His family owned the local confectionery, and his father invested in plenty of the local businesses so the townsfolk afforded the son some leniency. He was often an annoyance and a troublemaker to most people, but for some reason he always loved Tom. He pulled the delicate young man up to the bar and slammed a few coins down onto the counter for dramatic effect. Andy, he announced loudly. Andy Newhouse was the owner of the Cattleville Inn. He was a short, stocky man with tiny, intense eyes and a balding head, the sleeves of his shirt were often rolled up to his biceps, revealing the massive muscles underneath. When Billy shouted at him, he turned and glared at the young man. "'Billy Vipitas, he snarled. "'What in the most holy hell did you want?' "'Today,' Billy continued loudly, "'is my friend's birthday.' He slapped Tom on the back, knocking the wind out of him. "'And I want to show him a good time.' Andy pressed his palms onto the bar and leaned forward toward the two young men. Does that good time involve ordering some damn alcohol? Billy paused, blinking at the man. Um, he began with some confusion. Of course. Andy's eyebrows lifted, and his head waggled as he waited. Then order, he said, already exasperated. Tom wasn't sure what the confusion was about. Had Billy expected some sort of argument? Did he expect Andy to toss them both out? To be honest, Tom nearly expected it as well. It was easy to forget that they both weren't little kids anymore. Right, Billy spoke up. Of course. Um, two beers? 
Andy rolled his eyes and sighed. Coming right up. Billy giggled as the man turned away to fill their glasses. He glanced around and took in their surroundings. So, he said quietly, leaning into Tom, what do you want to do first? We could find ourselves a card game, or... He smiled wickedly. We could just dive right into the girls. I... Tom was nervous again. I may have to work up to that one, Billy. His friend laughed. Cards it is, then. Andy dropped their beers in front of them. And more alcohol. Drink your beer, Tommy. It'll help with them nerves. He grabbed his glass and slammed back a third of its contents. He then smacked his lips and wiped the foam away from his upper lip. Tom tried to follow suit. He pressed his glass to his lips and took in a large drag. It was bitter and not at all what he expected. He forced himself to swallow, giving the glass a squint. Don't worry, Billy said, clamping his hand on his shoulder again. You'll learn to love it. Now, let's find us a game. Billy looked around the room. Tom joined him. A number of games were in progress, most consisting of only three or four men. Quiet games with little talking. Each man was older, more severe. They stared at their hands and played with very little interest in what happened around them. None of them looked very inviting. Do you think, Tom asked, any of them will let us play? He pulled another drag off the top of his drink, receiving mostly foam. Sure, Billy replied cheerfully. I'm sure any of these guys would love to milk a few young bucks out of their money. They won't care that we're beginners. You ain't a beginner, Tom corrected. You've been playing for years. Yeah, Billy laughed, smacking his lips again, having downed more of his beer. With boys. These here are men. They skilled masters. We could learn a lot from them. Ain't you afraid of losing? Nah, that's half the fun. His eyes landed on a table in the far corner. Hold up, he said, stopping himself, his face dropping into something far more serious. What? Tom asked. What is it? Billy leaned back over the bar, drawing the owner's attention. Hey, Andy, he called out, waving the man over. Andy, come here. The man rolled his eyes again and approached. What is it? he asked. You ready for another already? No, not just yet. Billy leaned in close to him and pointed nonchalantly to the corner of the room. That far table there. Is that who I think it is? Andy squinted in the direction Billy pointed. Then his face dropped. Don't even think about it, Billy, he grumbled. Think about what? I'm just asking a question. The man looked at him pointedly. You're just asking for trouble, ain't ya? Ain't it or ain't it not? Who? Tom piped up, rising to his tiptoes to see. Across the room, nestled into a darkened corner, her back to the wall, was a woman. She looked to be in her early twenties, young, but something about her demeanor hardened her. She had sandy blonde hair that hung over her shoulder in a messy braid, strands of loose, wild hair falling all around her face, wiggling up into the air in wispy tendrils that danced as she moved. Her eyes were dark, concealed by a dirty old gambler she pulled low over her brow. Unlike the other women in the place, mostly the whores, she didn't wear a dress of any kind. She wore an old cotton button-down under a tattered brown vest, brown trousers, and a pair of dark leather boots. Over the back of her chair laid what looked like a tan-colored duster and a heavy leather holster draped over the top of it. She had a foot propped up on the chair across from her and a hand wrapped around a giant glass of something. She stared down at it with such intense stillness, Tom wondered if she wasn't real. "'It's her, ain't it?' Billy asked quietly. Billy, I swear, Andy growled. That's Jack, right? Jack Sammons. The sheriff's daughter? Tom asked, breaking his gaze from the woman and snapping his attention to the man behind the bar. Jacqueline Sammons? I heard about her. Yeah, Andy said with a sneer. She's about as famous as you are, Vipetus, when it comes to weaseling her way out of trouble. Billy snorted a scoff. Well, my daddy ain't the damn sheriff. No, the man confirmed harshly. He ain't. She's gotten away with a lot more than I have, the kid argued. I heard she killed a man over a horse, Tom put in, backing himself closer to Billy. I heard she wanted it, so she shot him to get it. That, Andy clarified, is a damn rumor. I also heard that Billy here was a member of the Walden Gang. Don't believe everything you hear. 
Billy scoffed again. I might be. You never know. Yeah, Andy grumbled, pulling away. And I'm the fucking president. You want my advice, boys? Stay away from that woman. I guess, Tom said quietly, we look elsewhere. That table over there looks fairly nice. Maybe they'll let us join. Don't be ridiculous, Tommy, Billy snorted. I ain't passing up this chance. He grabbed the young man by his arm and drug him across the room. But what if she don't want to play? Tom whispered, pulling back on his arm. He didn't like the idea of talking to Jack, let alone asking her to play a game with them. What if the rumors were true? Won't know till we ask her. Before he knew it, Billy was propping Tom up next to the very table the woman was seated at. She stared down at her glass, seemingly unaware of their presence. Up close, she looked meaner. There was a darkness to her eyes Tom didn't like. Billy cleared his throat and bounced a bit on the balls of his feet. He waited patiently. Jack didn't move. He tried again, louder. Ahem. She still didn't move. Um, Billy started, Miss Sammons? I ain't interested, she grumbled out, her voice low and smooth. We was just, we was wondering if you'd like to play around. Billy pulled a deck of cards from his pocket and waved them in the air. He smiled nervously. What part of I ain't interested do you not fucking understand? It's just, Billy's face dropped. It's just one game, ma'am. We wasn't... Jack's head lifted, and Tom felt his knees go weak as her eyes made contact with his. She glared at him, then turned her gaze to Billy, scoffing upon seeing him. Billy Vipetus, she snorted. Jesus fucking Christ. She shook her head and pulled her glass to her lips. One game, Billy insisted, gaining his confidence. He pulled the chair out from under Jack's foot, letting her boot hit the floor with a thud that made Tom jump. Billy plopped himself into it and dropped the cards on the table. That's all I'm asking. Jack leaned forward across the table, burning her stare into him. I ain't, she said more firmly, fucking interested. She slammed back the rest of her drink, dropped the glass onto the table, then waved to one of the nearby whores. Failing to get the girl's attention, she snapped her fingers. Hey, she called out, triggering Tom to jump again. Hey, Maggie. You see, Miss Sammons, Billy continued, grabbing Tom and pulling him down into the chair next to him. It's Tom's birthday today, and... Maggie! Jack completely ignored him. Billy trudged forward. Well, he's never played with anyone other than just our group of, well, boys, and... A tall, thin whore slipped swiftly over to the table, giving the bar quick, apprehensive glances over her shoulder. She had long, dark hair which fell over her exposed shoulders in waves. Her skin looked smooth and soft, and Tom felt a definitive tightening in his pants. He darted a glance over at Billy, remembering how his friend had promised him an evening with one of the girls. Tom wondered if this would be the one he'd get. The thought made him sweat more. Jack, Maggie hissed pulling up next to their table companion. Keep it down. You know how Andy feels about you hollering in his place. Jack's hand grabbed hold of the girl's knee and not so subtly slipped up her thigh, disappearing into the folds of her petticoats. Ah, oh, come on, Mags, Jack drawled out. You know Andy loves me. She leaned toward the girl, nearly shoving her face into her stomach. Almost as much as you do. She grinned wickedly. It was in that moment Tom realized how drunk the woman actually was. He was too distracted by the darkness in her eyes to notice how bloodshot and watery they were, and the weakness in his knees drew his focus away from the slurring of her words. She was, in fact, very drunk. Maggie grabbed hold of Jack's wrist and pulled it out from under her skirt. Jack, she whispered, you know the rules. She looked around to see if anyone was watching. Jack threw up her hands in surrender and leaned back in her chair. Don't touch the merchandise, she cried. I know, I know, but... Her hand reached out again, this time taking hold of a handful of Maggie's skirt and pulling the girl closer. What if I was to slip you a little something? What'll a dime get me? Maggie slapped at Jack's hand. Toss down on your ass if you ain't careful. Jack laughed and grabbed her empty glass from the table. Fine, then, she said, smiling. How about a refill instead? The whore grabbed the glass and sighed. Fine, she said, but keep it down. As Maggie sidled away, Jack watched her go, 
her eyes staring with amazing stability at the girl's backside. Tom felt uncomfortable. He glanced over at Billy and saw his companion grinning stupidly. So, Billy said slyly. He waited for Jack to turn her attention to him. She glared unhappily. You fancy the ladies, do you? Forget about it, she replied. I ain't into portly little cunts like you. Her eyes darted up and down, scanning him. Tom snorted out a laugh. He couldn't help it. The look on Billy's face was priceless. He stifled it when his friend shot him an angry glare. Billy, not to be outdone, came up with the only retort he could think of. I heard you once killed a man for his horse, he said, giving the woman a smug look. Truth or just rumor? He leaned back in his chair and waited for an answer. Jack had one. And I heard your father give Stavros hand jobs after hours, she snarled back. Any fucking truth to that? Billy's jaw snapped shut and his eyes narrowed. Or that they both like sucking each other off behind the church on Sundays. Heard that fucking rumor, too. She leaned forward over the table and glared at Billy. Maybe you shouldn't be believing every fucking thing you hear, you fat little prick. A tense moment hung between them as Billy worked his jaw around, trying to form words. You think you scare me? he asked quietly. Jack's eyebrows raised. I don't give a shit if I scare you, she returned. I just don't think it wise for you to be coming over here flinging your wild accusations round. She leaned back into her chair, especially when the bitch you're flinging them at has a fucking gun. So you didn't kill that man, Tom interjected. When her eyes darted to him, he flinched, feeling her glare all the way down to his ass, which nearly unloaded its contents. Despite what you may have heard, she began, I have never killed anyone. She looked back at Billy. I've shot people, yeah, but I ain't no murderer. Well, Billy piped up, sighing heavily and forcing a pained smile. Ain't that a relief? He giggled nervously. Glad we cleared that up. He leaned forward and retrieved the deck of cards from the table. So, how about that game? Jack stared at him for a moment, pondering. She licked her lips and squinted at him. You got money? The kid snorted, then pulled out his money pouch, dropping it on the table. The weight of it hitting the wood was enough to bring a satisfied grin to Jack's lips. All right, then, she said, grabbing her sleeves to roll them up. Your deal, shithead. 